Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert, and today I'm going to be running through a different kind of uh, automation because this one is built in N8N instead of Make. Now, what this is, is a LinkedIn scraper to help you get leads at scale. And so what it does is it looks Google searches for LinkedIn pages to find people who match your criteria. Um, now, you might be thinking, why would I do that? I already have LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I have Apollo. What is the point of this? Uh, well, <laughs> there's basically three reasons I built this automation. One is that LinkedIn Sales Navigator searches cap out at 2,500 contacts, which means you need to do a lot of alterations in order to break the, that search down in order to get more, um, get more leads. And even once that's done, you still need a third party tool to scrape that information and find emails. Now, uh, most people as an alternative, they use Apollo. But well, there's a downside to that. It's pretty expensive and there's a limit to the amount of API calls you can make in a day. So for a lot of people who can't afford uh, an Apollo, uh, this is just something which is pretty free. And the other reason I built it is because I wanted to build something for N8N to show my audience how something like that is done. And since I already have a LinkedIn scraper uh, automation running in Make, this was a pretty easy one to adjust and replicate. And so I think it's pretty cool and interesting to look at. So this is how it works. Basically, what we do is we have our campaign set up on our Airtable and we make a Google search. So Google, it's free. Everybody has access to it. Uh, what you do is first off, you put in site code on linkedin.com slash in slash. And then after that, you just uh, play around with whatever search filters you want. So obviously, if you're um, a Google search expert or a, a Boolean search function mastermind, you'll have a lot to play around with here. The real only limit is your imagination. But you can see here, for example, I'm looking for chief marketing officers in Spain or the United Kingdom. Uh, I can also add in something like uh, I want them to have aviation in the title or, I don't know, finance. And you'll see here it updates the search and we've got all of these people. So then the next problem is how do we get this information from Google? Do we have to buy some sort of a robot scraper, spend more money on licenses we don't need? No, uh, once you take this information, so we take the Google search information, we add it into our, our uh, Airtable. For frequent views of my page, you'll know this is my campaign tab where I basically monitor all automated campaigns and scraping and enrichment procedures I have. And for this one, just need to give it a name, scraper, CMO, put in the company search, and that's basically it. And then the NA10 thing comes into play. So in NA10, first we have Airtable search record. So this is something I use because I use Airtable a lot. Um, but in terms of tooling, this could easily be a Google search, uh, a, Google, a Google sheet, I should say. So that's free. Uh, so if you wanted to make this completely no cost, just use Google Sheets. Uh, what this Airtable is doing is it's searching for records. Um, in this case, I've got a very specific one. I wanted it to be the name of the campaign I wanted, um, but usually it would just be status not completed and name is in a include scrape, for example. And you'll see here, it returns information. The only thing I'm really interested in here is this URL. So we have a, a Google, uh, sorry, we have a, an Airtable function just pulling up that URL each time. And next, we have some custom code. So what this does is it's basically changing the start page and increasing it by 10 each time. This is because when you make a HTTP call to Google, it will return you 10 results. And obviously once you've got those 10, you need the next 10, and then the next 10, and then the next 10. So I need to have this number increasing incrementally by 10 each time it runs. So this is what this JSON code here is for. All it does is it converts this start page from 10 to this start page 20. Next, we make a HTTP request. So what this does is it takes the company search, so this field here, and then it adds the uh, the start page I'm looking at. So in my particular case, it's gonna be looking at start page 20 because it's on the first page, now it's the second. And as I mentioned earlier, it means each time it runs, it'll be 30, then 40, then 50, then 60. So this way we're always getting new people. And you'll see here, this is the, the results it returns. So it returns a HTML of all this information. And if I do a quick search here for LinkedIn, You'll see here that we have some information. So we have uh, Hannah Britt, Chief Marketing Officer, Juan Gonzalez, we have Ivo van der Brandt. So if we come back to our information here, you'll see here that the link is the person's profile and that's what we want. So each time it comes out, we're just looking for the, uh, the profile URL. So again, really, really simple stuff so far. Uh, other than Airtable, no tools, no special tools needed. Again, this could be a Google Sheet. 
So this is getting the HT, HTML from the HTTP, and it's going to have 10 of those LinkedIn profiles. So the next stage here is an if function. So what is this? This is basically looking um, for when the campaign finishes automatically, because imagine there's only 10 results in a search, and I've scraped those 10. The next 10 seconds later, I don't want it to find the same 10 and then the same 10. When it ends, I want it to end automatically. So what I'm looking at here is to take all of this output data from the website, and I don't want it to match a reject. So I have a does not match rejects as the if here. And this reject is basically looking for a next button because once you reach the end of a Google search, that next button disappears. So this is a pretty simple way of saying, okay, if uh, the next button is not there, update the record and it will come here, status completed, and then it will no longer run. But as long as that next button does appear, then the rest continues. So just to make clear what happens here, imagine that the thing has ended. What it does is I just put the extract Q to 100, total extracted to 100. Those are just random numbers. The reason for that is in my Airtable, I have a formula here to say when the extract Q and the total extracted are 100%, as you can see here, status moves to completed. Now, the reason for this is because I have lots of other automations and enrichments going on where the extract Q is actually important. For this Google search, I don't really care though. So I just say, put it at 100 and 100, and once it's there, it will mark as completed and no longer run anymore. Taking a step back, let's say it is running. The first, the next stage here, so it's still running. We want to increase the start page by 10, because I mentioned each time we need it to increase. So we take that number generated in the earlier code, we add it to the start page here, it's 20. So then the next time it runs, it will ask for 30, and then the next time 40. So that's important to keep track of. Uh, but the main magic happens here. So we have another code running here. And what this does is it's a rejects and it's basically looking for all instances of um, these uh, profile addresses. So this, here's an example running here. It's taking the HTML data and it's found 10 results. Uh, Hannah Britt, J. Juan Gonzalez, Ivory Van der Brown, blah, 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 blah. Uh, which is perfect for us because that gives us a great point to start enriching. So the next stage, this is very similar to the make iterator. This just splits out the, the matches. So you can see here, it's uh, delivered to me as an array of these 10, but I need them as individual ones to process. So simply, I just take the matches here, fields to spit out, and then it will just return me the same information, but in separate forms. The next stage is to enrich that. So I have, oops. How do I move the thingy? Here we go. So I have a LinkedIn profile. Can I find an email address from that? Yes, we can. So for this particular example, we're using Prospio. And this is what the Prospio field looks like. We're making a post request to this URL, uh, LinkedIn email finder. Normally you have an API key in here, but I've deleted it. Although I'm on a <laughs> free account, a trial with Prospio for the purpose of this video. So you can steal it if you want, I don't care. And basically what it's doing is it's uh, searching for a URL that matches this. So it's looking for the URL of, uh, in this case, UK LinkedIn Hannah Britt or Hannah O'Britt. And then it will return me any information found. So in this case, Hannah Britt, she's female, chief marketing officer at U Networks, which is what we're looking for. A summary of the profile, it returns you the job title, the gender, her skills, her work experience, the URL of the company she works for, her start date, the end date. It's basically an entire scraping of the LinkedIn profile. Uh, plus her old companies. So if, if this is important for your particular campaigns to know places they worked at before or the average tenure inside a company, we have that information. My computer's pretty slow today, apologies for this. And it will return, yeah, as you can see, and, and, and also more information about the company here. So we have the size of the company, the logo, website, domain, the industry they're in when it was founded, a description of the company, um, the location, all of this stuff. And hopefully it will also return the email as well. So if I just do a search for emails. In this case, we've got an email for Hannah. It's a catch-all. And the good thing about Prospero is it will tell you whether it's validated. So in this case for Juan Gonzalez, it's found an email and it's valid. So that is that step. Now, the next step is again, is an if function because we've got the emails, but we're not gonna find the emails for all 10 people. So we can introduce a waterfall method. So this would be an element where you can customize. If you don't have enough money for lots of different tools, you can just stick with something like Prospio or any email, any email finder that works off of LinkedIn and any verified emails or emails found, you can just send to a Google Sheet. In this case, I have uh, an if function. 
And what it's asking it to do is to see whether an email is equal to valid. So we saw before uh, the email status. Uh, in this case, it's a catch-all, so she'll come out as false. So we have here the, the if function. We'll look for from the HTTP request whether the email status, what is it? And if it's equal to a valid, then it goes into the true branch. So here we found three emails where the email, according to Prospero at least, is verified and correct. And we have seven where it's decided that even if it's found an email, maybe it's not valid. So why do we do that? So as we can see here, we have an email for Hannah Britt. It's a catch-all. We have an email not found. We have an email, but it's another catch-all. So you can see here, again, you can customize this. If you want to work with catch-alls, then great. If you don't, put it in, included in the, the if branch. So these three that we found, in this case, we're sending them to a Google Sheet. So again, uh, in terms of customization of this automation, you can change that Google Sheet to an Airtable. You can change it to adding to a campaign in Lemlist or Instantly or Reply. You can add it to a, some sort of a, an ads list. It's up to you. Just for the purpose of this automation, keeping it simple, Google Sheets, no license. It just adds in verified emails there. So the next stage is the people whose emails we haven't got as valid. So I have a filter here. And so we, this filter here, again, is just looking to see if a domain exists because for the next tool I'm going to be using, uh, we need to have a domain. So if it's not there, it's just a waste of an API call. Uh, so this filter searches if a domain exists. If it does and it's kept, it moves into the next part, which is a find email HDMI call. So this is a post call to app at find email. I'm searching for a name. Uh, again, here under the authorization parameter, you normally have an API key. I've taken mine out. And it's basically taking the name that we found before and we're taking the domain that we found before and it's trying to see if we can find some email addresses for it. So here in the case of Hannah Britt, again, it's found an email. In the case of find email, all emails it finds are verified. So although this was the same as Prospio, now we know it is valid. Even though it's a catch-all, it is valid, so we can use it. Ivo van der Brand, found nothing. Arno. Oh no, Adam, it's found something. Shuttle would know. Uh, Adrian Fennec, yes, et cetera, et cetera. So we can see here from these extra seven, we found them. So we can put them into another if um, uh, module here, where basically says, if the contact email exists, true, put it into a Google Sheet. If false, we can continue the waterfall method. So we can then ask these people to go into an Apollo module and then repeat it and then perhaps a get prospect module and then repeat it and then perhaps a hunter module and then repeat it. So the idea that you can be as expansive as you want or as minimalist as you want. The, the whole principal reason for this was to create something very lightweight. You scrape 10, um, you scrape 10 profiles every, let's say 10 seconds, that's 60 in a minute, which is what, 84,000 a day. Um, and for that, it doesn't, cost you any money except for however much um, credits you have with your preferred email finder. So the benefit of using this to find 84,000 a day versus something like LinkedIn Sales Navigator and then paying for a tool on top of that is that you can search for more. You can be more imaginative with your Google search to find people. So again, here, if we come back to Google search, I could add in something like a hashtag. Um, where's my hashtag button? This one, hashtag events. And then I'm searching for chief marketing officers in Spain or England who work in aviation and are also interested in events. Um, so if you're pretty imaginative about this, you can find a, a very, very good profile of people without paying for LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Uh, the other advantage to this is you don't need to use your LinkedIn account to get this information. So you're not risking your cookies and LinkedIn finding it and putting you in LinkedIn prison. You don't have to go through the trouble of finding LinkedIn proxies and alternate accounts. And again, it means you don't need to pay for a very high Apollo license to achieve the same things. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, it's not a build along as I've been doing recently, just because NA10 is very frustrating to, well, it's not actually, it's pretty cool to use, but it'd be very frustrating for you to watch me build this as I go along, because you have to keep on running it over and over and over again in order to get previous results. And it would be very hard for me to hike my API keys. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as I'm contractually obliged to say, apparently, please like and subscribe or share if you do. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Thank you for your time.